Team USA has just been invited to and will be competing in their fifth ever Copa America, the oldest continental championship in the world, okay? Now, in their first four appearances, Team USA has been very hit or miss, to put it lightly. Most recently, in 2016, when Team USA was invited to Copa America, they made another deep run. They ended up having two wins in the group stage, did well in the quarterfinals, lost in the semis, and ended up losing their third place match. But that is two fourth place appearances and two group stage exits for Team USA. Now, Team USA is expecting much different results as this will be the first time the club is going into Copa America under Greg Berhalter's leadership. And speaking of Greg Berhalter, he's a bit of an interesting case. You see, he started off back in 2011. He was the manager for a Swedish club called Hamarby, right? He was brought in the first ever American-born manager to coach a professional team in Europe. Pretty impressive. Anyway, in his first season there, he makes a lot of progress. The team is able to move up seven positions, but they aren't able to earn promotion. And just after a year and a half as the manager over there in Sweden, Greg Berhalter is sacked. He is fired. And the reason being that there was a lack of attacking play under Berhalter. And we go on to see this, right? But anyway, he's fired in 2013. And after a few months, he ends up landing a head coaching gig under the Columbus crew. And this is where he has a lot of his success. He's stuck on Columbus crew for about five or six seasons. And under Greg Berhalter, the Columbus crew end up making the playoffs most of the time. Hell, I'm pretty sure they only missed the playoffs once. And they even made it to the MLS Cup in 2015. Did they win the MLS Cup? Absolutely not. But you know what? Team USA is used to losing, so they go out and they see a guy who wasn't able to earn his team promotion, wasn't able to win the MLS Cup, and they think he will make a great manager for Team USA. And they were coming off the fact that they failed to qualify for the World Cup for the first time in a long time back in 2018. That, after that failed qualification, is exactly when Greg Berhalter got the job. And we'll get more into that in a second, but for right now, I just wanted to slow the video down and remind you guys to like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps and goes a long way. We're trying to hit 3,000 subscribers. Every subscription is appreciated. All right, let's get back to some Greg Berhalter lore here, because that's what this is. Anyway, under Greg Berhalter, Team USA has dominated Mexico, right? I mean, have they accomplished much else? Not really. But those are the two best teams in North America, so beating Mexico is pretty impressive for Team USA. I mean, the 2021 CONCACAF Gold Cup, yeah, Team USA beats Mexico by one goal, so you've got that. And then, his first real test, 2022 FIFA World Cup. Here comes Berhalter's first chance at the real big stage. And in Russia, well, he was able to lead Team USA out of the group stage. Their first matchup against Wales ends in a 1-1 draw. Their second matchup against England, they somehow managed to not lose the game. It was 0-0. I don't know how Berhalter and Team USA pulled it off, but they didn't lose to England. And then in Game 3, a much-needed win here. They only scored one goal, but one goal felt like enough because thanks to Christian Pulisic, Mr. Captain America himself, they ended up winning against Iran and made it to the round of 16. Did they get pounded by Denmark? Yes, they did. But still, the round of 16 is very impressive for a squad who failed to qualify just four years ago. Now, the thing about Greg Berhalter is that his contract ended up expiring December of that year. He ended up getting replaced by an interim coach who left for a better job. And then around mid-2023, Greg Berhalter was signed back again through the 2026 World Cup. And because Team USA is one of the many hosts, they automatically qualify. So the only thing Berhalter has to worry about is performing well at Copa America, his first. Of course, Berhalter isn't gonna stray away from his classic 4-3-3 formation. It's been working for him. Hell, they did have that draw recently against Brazil in a friendly, so do with that what you will. 
Now, I do want to take a deeper dive into some of the stars here. First off, we've got Matt Turner, the goalkeeper. He's playing for Nottingham Forest right now, and in his last season over there in the Premier League, he had 17 starts, 56 saves, two clean sheets, and 28 goals allowed. Now, Nottingham Forest is not the best team, all right? But the thing they do have is a good goalkeeper in Matt Turner. He's been playing very well, and he's also been a star on Team USA for quite a while, right? And next up, we have a few of Team USA's midfielders. And who better than to start things off with than Giovanni Reyna, you know, another Nottingham Forest player. You see, Dortmund had been Giovanni Reyna's home for a few years now, but he has been getting less and less playing time. So they decided to loan him out to Nottingham Forest, where you wouldn't really call it playing, right? He was only got into nine games, had two starts and one assist. That is his main stat, one assist and his time with Nottingham Forest. Yeah, Reyna has been struggling to play everywhere he goes. In fact, he was loaned out to Forest in hopes of getting more minutes and a more consistent role than he had at Dortmund. And of course, things just didn't go as planned. Things have not been going as planned for quite a while for Reyna, who, you know, had previously had beef with their manager, Greg Berhalter, Team USA's. One of the reasons Berhalter was let go was because of the drama he had with Reyna. But of course, they are both back now and need to work things out, right? And last but not least, Team USA's best midfielder, Weston McKinney. He is on Juventus, you know, whatever you want to call him. That's who Weston McKinney's playing for. In 29 games, 29 starts, 5 sub-ins, he was able to get 9 assists. Probably the most qualified midfielder Team USA has right now. And that's about it, right? That's about it for the midfield. Let's really get to the strikers where things pick up. And first up, we have Timothy Way. Shout outs to him for finally making it to a big club. He's now playing for Juventus as well. You know, another Serie A player in his last season with the team. He was only able to get one assist. But you know what? He started 12 games, had 18 subs. So, you know what? Shout out to Timothy Way. He's been playing on Team USA since 2018. He's been a solid player for Team USA. And I'm pretty sure, give him time, he will be great for Juventus. And last but certainly not least, Christian Pulisic, the man himself, the captain, the leader. He also plays for AC Milan. It seems like Team USA has got a lot of Serie A players, especially the ones starting from. But anyway, Pulisic went out, had 32 starts, 4 subs, in 12 goals, 8 assists. Now we are looking at real stats here. He got 12 goals for AC Milan, 8 assists on 67 shots. That is why he is the GOAT for Team America. And I know those stats seem lackluster compared to other superstars, but you know what? Pulisic is Team USA superstar. And that's all that matters. Now, I do want to give a few flowers to some of the young players on Team USA who were able to make the team, but haven't cracked the starting lineup just yet. I'm talking a Josh Sargent and Ricardo Pepe. These guys are going to be great for Team USA for years to come. But right now, they're just going to have to deal with coming off the bench. And let's be honest, they're going to be subbed in. The way that Greg Berhalter plays, constant subs, especially in a tough group stage like this. Uruguay, Panama, Bolivia, yes, let's just hope that Team USA can get out of the group stage and I'm expecting them to do better than they've ever done before. I'm talking better than a fourth place match. I want to see Team USA in the finals, okay? Anyway, that's about it for this video. Really just wanted to cover them in Copa America for the first time in what, eight years? Yeah, long ass time. All right, catch y'all later. Much love. Deuces.